Paul Glenn Sanford, Joel Nicholson. I was going to say, why don't you ask anybody who wants to speak, you have to come up here. And it may not take too long to get to the bottom of the list. Thomas Yeah, good idea. I'm Joel Michelson. I'm a former township supervisor. I live about 60, 70 miles west, southwest of here on a, uh, one of the Lake Michigan shoreline townships. I bring that up and preface my comments because while I was township supervisor, someone came to my door and says, I'm having problems with the oil company uh, in my township. Uh, the wells are there, they're polluting, they're killing my trees, et cetera, et cetera. It took more than 10 years for the Geological Survey Division of the DTQ, and I separate you guys from that, okay? It took them over 10 years to start the cleanup. Before the start, the, okay, the wells were shut up, shut in, and uh, that guy, that company became history. But before the cleanup was started, new permits were issued for drilling in that area. There was no opportunity for leveraging uh, in the cleanup process. The cleanup process included removing soils that were contaminated. In their environmental investigation, they said the groundwater contamination is too expensive to economically clean it up. And it was never cleaned up. So my, my faith in the Department of Environmental Quality is a little bit tainted. So here are my comments. According to newspaper reports, Nestle withdrew 376 million gallons of water in 2016. If we put that into perspective, first of all, that's over 3 billion pint-sized bottles. Uh, scientists often talk about acre feet of water. So if we put that 300 and some million gallons of water into acre feet, if you put a foot of water on two square miles of land, that's the amount of water that they withdraw in a year. You want to put that down the road a little further because uh, if you took six tenths of an inch of rain over the area of a township, that is the amount of water that's being withdrawn. Michigan has an annual rainfall total of just under 36 inches. Now this doesn't seem like a lot of water, but when it comes from a few hundred acres, it's no longer reasonable use. Streams will be reduced in their rate of flow, wetlands will become less wet, and residential wells will go, will go dry. Whatever the rate of flow for Nestle's pumps, it must be sustainable. Sustainable for the wetland plants and animals, sustainable for the local residential wells, and sustainable for Nestle. A, no, a long-term sustainable water withdrawal is in the best interest of local <laughs> residents, Nestle, the people of Michigan, and state government. Some thought and action put, should be put into place uh, with the idea of increasing the amount of rainfall and water and snow melt infiltration. Said another way, we need to reduce the amount of stormwater runoff and allow it to get into the soil so it recharges. <coughs> that covers my concerns about water volume uh, withdrawal. Now let's talk about a reasonable payment for the 376 million gallons of pure Michigan water, which is a public resource. Most Michiganders feel 
that Nestle and other bottled water, other water bottlers should pay something for the water they pump and sell. I would rather not see any Michigan water resource labeled as a commodity to be bought and sold. This will muddy the waters and lead to a more complex issue. So, let's look at a revenue to come in the form of a fee for solid waste disposal. 376 million gallons of water equates to over 3 billion plastic water bottles of the popular 16 ounce variety. That's a lot of non-deposit plastic bottles entering the waste stream. It seems reasonable to charge a fee to the initial source of the solid waste, in this case, the, bottle wa the water bottlers. This fee should be charged to all water bottlers in Michigan, not just Nestle. A fee of one cent per plastic bottle would not break a company that is still receiving its raw materials at no charge. For Nestle, this would probably mean a fee of 20 to, million, 20 to 25 million dollars based on 2016 pumping figures. This could be accomplished easily if Nestle would simply donate this amount of fund to support solid waste reduction, recycling, and reuse, and possibly other regional and statewide programs. If Nestle is reluctant, then our state legislators should step up to the plate and pass appropriate legislation right. to, to make right. this happen. Right. If state government is unwilling, I say power to the people. Right. Right. Michigan residents can express their wants through their votes and through a statewide ballot initiative. This would be rather easy, easy to achieve. The bottle bill was passed 25 years ago by the people of Michigan, not by the legislature, not by the DEQ, but by the people. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Kevin Caligari. David Gardner, Claire McClinton, yeah. Tom Anderson, from Big Rapids, Michael Williams, Warren, Hi, my name is Michael Williams. I'm here representing Bulldog Sustainability Alliance, a registered student organization of this university. I'm also a member of student government and very involved in my community. I've been a Michigan resident for 34 years. Um, first and foremost, I'm not going to say anything you haven't heard anymore. Um, so I'm going to try and keep this pretty brief. Um, this isn't something you guys usually do, holding these public hearings. There needs to be more. People have made that very clear. You have heard the voices of Michigan tonight say that to you. You need to hear that and you need to respect that. Furthermore, Nestle, uh, as been pointed out about Peter Brabeck, his comments about water being a human right, not being a human right, Nestle has gone out of their way to spend, to make entire web pages dedicated to clearing his name of things he has very clearly stated. We are not to commoditize our human right, um, especially for Nestle. Of, it, of all freaking people. Um, <laughs> we have a record here in Michigan. The DEQ's decision is supposed to be based on fact. That's on your sheets. We have a record. We have precedent. We have court rulings. Those are your facts. We have rivers that have dried up. We have stream beds that have been exposed. That's your proof. A model is not proof. I want to speak to another here, and I think it's two too bad that we had to ignore the 4.30 Q&A and just start at 7 because right. everybody already had to leave. Right. Mm -hmm. But let me say to the few people that are remaining, boycott Nestle. Yeah. Tell every one of your friends why they need to boycott Nestle. The, we are the water protectors. Water is life. 
I, I'm concerned about the censorship that has gone on here tonight. First and foremost, we have a right to protest. We have a right to speak up. And we are not being allowed to sign in our university. We have rights guaranteed by the university as a members of student organizations to free speech on campus. But because the state is here, we're not going to abide by that tonight. I don't know what that's about. Um, I want to know why $200 to remove this much water is what the amount is when the average Michigan household pays at least $200 for their year's supply of water. When this amount of water would supply every household in Michigan with water for a year. How does that add up? This is your job. Do it. Yeah,